This is Carl Moore talking management for the Globe and Mail. Today, delighted to speak to Paul Tellier, former CEO of CN and of Bombardier, and Dick Evans, who just retired recently as the CEO of Rio Tinto Alcan. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Carl. So, Dick, what do you think the recovery is coming? What shape is the recovery going to be? Is it going to be a V, a W, an L, a U? What's your view of the economy in the next little while? Well, first of all, I think you have to say that uh, we're off the bottom. I, I think there's general consensus. Uh, the Bank of Canada has declared the recession over, Bernanke's declared it over, now the IMF yesterday declared it over. So I think uh, uh, clearly we're off the bottom. We're in early stages of recovery. Um, having said that, uh, we've had a tremendous run in the stock market already. We've seen a run up in commodity prices. Uh, all of the leading or concurrent indicators are, are signaling that. But I think we have to be careful that some of the lagging indicators like unemployment are very likely to continue sending negative signals for the next uh, three to six months. But that's very typical, I think, in, in a recovery. Do you see it as ever getting back to the, the growth days that we saw in the last decade bef before the recession? Or is that something that's thing of the past, effectively? Well, I think the last uh, four or five years now is, are generally acknowledged to have been unsustainable growth rates fueled by unsustainable and accelerating uh, capital liquidity. So I doubt we'll see that type of a, uh, a growth. But I think if you take the longer period, the 10-year period, uh, and take out the excess that occurred in the last few years, I think that's, that's a very sustainable uh, level of growth. Paul, we're going from the G8 to the G20. I guess first, is that a good thing that we do that? And secondly, where is the future of the, gr the growth of the world economy in your mind? Well, I think that it was in inevitable that the G8, you know, would be replaced by the G20. You've got, you know, the so-called BRIC countries, you know, uh, I mean, Brazil, Russia, India, China, you know, who are now uh, playing a major role in the world economic system. And therefore, it was to be expected that they would want to be at the table. So therefore, I'm inclined to believe that this is, uh, this is, uh, you know, a good evolution that we're moving in the right direction. Where do you see growth coming in the future? Is it, it's been the U.S. to a certain degree in the last 10, 20 years. Do you see that shifting to another part of the world, or are we going to continue to look to the U.S.? Uh, no doubt about that, that there will be a major shift uh, towards especially Asia. Uh, you know, if you look, for instance, at China, today, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 50% of the cell phones in the world uh, are operating in China. Uh, you know, the largest auto, auto sales today worldwide are very much in China and so on. So I think China will become a, uh, is already is a major player and will become increasingly so. Uh, and India, you know, will follow uh, very quickly. One should not forget about India. You know, they have a great many things going for them. They have a rule of law system. They have the English language, they have strong traditions, uh, it's a democracy, and so on and so forth. So I'm a believer that uh, these, two, uh, these two countries will play a major role, not to mention uh, Brazil. Uh, Brazil, for instance, you know, in, 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 the, uh, in the mining sector, uh, over a period of about five years, uh, Valley, you know, uh, formerly CVRD, has become, you know, the second largest player in the business, you know, in most of the commodities that they are producing right after BHP Billiton. So therefore, uh, here is another country that's an example of another country, you know, moving forward, you know, at the center of the economic world. What does this mean from a Canadian viewpoint? What should we do given that the U.S. is going to be not as important to us, though it's still 75, 80 percent of our exports? Is there a strategy for Canada going forward, or do we just have to live with what we are today? Yeah, I, I think the likely shift from the G8 to the G20 is on balance good for Canada. Uh, and the reason is I, I think Canada can be more influential globally in a G20 setting than it can in a G8. Uh, and the reason being that in the G8, I think uh, the concentration of power was such 
uh, that it was more difficult. But I think in a G20 setting, uh, you'll have a, a more diversity of debate, uh, and you'll have the need for uh, someone who can bridge the gap between uh, the U.S. view and some of the developing economy views. And I think that's an opportunity for Canada, both in terms of political influence as well as an opportunity for Canadian enterprises. What should Canadian business people do better? I mean, the Americans are our cousins and so seem better at getting really big global companies. Now, you two are the great exception in terms of Bombardier, uh, CN as well as a great North American competitor, Alcan. But by and large, Canadian business seems to fall short relative to the U.S. What lessons might you suggest for Canadian business people? I think that uh, we've got to develop the spirit of entrepreneurship uh, far more than we have. Um, I think it's very important if you look at some companies, you know, like Falcon Bridge, like Inco, you know, which were took, taken over and so on, you can wonder, you know, you've got to wonder why. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe, uh, maybe, I'm not being, being critical here, but maybe uh, their vision was not global enough. Uh, maybe their mindset, you know, for competing around the world you know, was not at the level it should have been, and so on and so forth. So I think that we've got to develop uh, this mindset of competing worldwide, as opposed to focusing on our domestic market, which is too small for most sectors, and the U.S. market, and be ready to go abroad. And I think that a company like Bombardier has succeeded doing this. When you think that, you know, before 1986, these guys, you know, were not producing planes, and today, you know, they are the third largest manufacturer of aircraft in the world. So all this, you know, in the period of uh, just over 20 years and so on. So I think that we need more entrepreneurs, you know, of that type to really go after world markets. We were talking to MBAs today here at McGill. If you were that age again or a BCom at 20, how would you prepare yourself as a young Canadian for that kind of career to be that entrepreneur of 20 or 30 years from now? Probably the first thing I would do is, is consider an overseas assignment. Uh, and I know talking to some of the MBAs, uh, they're certainly considering that. Uh, because there's no substitute for getting outside of your home country, your, your comfort zone, and operating in a different environment. Uh, and Canadians are well known for that uh, as students just traveling, but I think less well known from a business standpoint. Uh, and I think if I were uh, an MBA, I would look for a two to three year assignment uh, in any one of a number of uh, locations around the world, providing the flexibility of coming back here or continuing in an international role uh, and also enhancing your, uh, your value. This has been Carl Moore talking management for the Globe and Mail. Today, I've had the great pleasure of talking to uh, Dick Evans, a former CEO of Alcan, and Paul Tellier, former CEO of the government in some ways, and then CN and Bombardier. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll have to do it again. Thank you. Thank you.